This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. One last scare. One last scare. Welcome to The Last Scare, a home for horror nerds to come together and gush about their favorite feel-good genre. Tonight we are joined by our special guest, Jordan, at Sith Morrison, who has been with us since day one. He was there in the live chat on the very first episode in June of 2022. And now we're at oh like God. episode 58 or something like that. He's been there for most of them. So it's very good to have you here, Jordan. Yeah. It's great to be here, truly. Round of applause. Have some like, good cheers going, woo! Teeny tiny, <laughs> teeny tiny claps. So Jordan, um, let's let's hear about you. How did you get into horror? What are your favorites? Oh, I want to say it was mostly my parents. I mean, probably like most people. I struggle to remember my first horror movie. I know some people can remember it, but I can't. But my favorites are Halloween, that being my absolute favorite. Uh, Evil Dead 2, Terrifier 2, uh, Conjuring 2, and Scream. A lot of sequels, I realized when I was mapping those out. I was just heard it here that. first, folks. We have... I was like, I was like, I know Blake's smiling when you said Terrifier 2. <laughs> was like... Well, I know Jordan's like my Terrifier guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're all very much on the same page right. with those picks. Yes, we I'm have a community so, yes. of great taste. Mm -hmm. And speaking mm -hmm. of some early horror... We're talking about The Strangers today. A Jordan pick, by the way. Early, huh? Well, I was going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get to that. It's so wanna... funny. I thought that, and then I was like, no, I'm not going to be a dick. <laughs> and <then> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, was... <laughs> I had a whole thing about how I have a core memory about this movie. We were 10 when it came out, Kim. It's oh, you were early horror. Us. Okay, sorry. My bad. It came out in 2000. No, this was one of the first horror movies ever, actually. Guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is who I am. I'm sorry. This is who I am. We're going to get in a time machine and go back to 2008. 2008, the beginning of time. And we're going to talk about The Strangers, a movie directed and written by Brian Bernito. Bertino. Bertino. <laughs> Fuck, I said. <laughs> Brian Bertino. He also. I'm gonna. Can I just. Okay, hold on. Pause. Sorry. It's because I was joking with Jordan earlier. I was like, I'm gonna say Bernito. <laughs> I jinxed myself. Okay, guys. I'm sorry. Bertino. Bertino. Brian Bertino, who also later directed uh, The Monster, which is one of the first A24 movies I saw. I thought it was kind of simple. Didn't he also do. No. Did he do Dark and the Wicked? Um, I don't know, but he did. I think he produced Black Coat's Daughter. He, no, he did Dark and the Wicked. Okay. He did just... do Dark and the Wicked, yes. Thank you. Uh, I do remember when this came out. I remember everyone kind of freaking out about it around me. It's one of my first like core memories of horror. Uh, it was a huge deal because it was one of those based on a true story movies. Oh, yeah. Very, very accurate to real life. Well, it's based on two things, mostly. It's based on the Manson family murders because... Brian was reading about it and how the details painted, the details <laughs> painted a picture of what it was like for them that night. Yeah. So he wanted like a victim story, pretty much. And I mean, it was was that no? I was just saying, I was like, yeah. I mean, that's kind of where they those kind of like foundation unfortunately came from of like those home invasion and stuff because it's like it's one of the most famous ones. Yeah, you know, uh, one of his main points was that they didn't know who the Manson family were. They didn't know, they were strangers to them. They didn't know what was happening to them. So that was one of the inspirations. The other half of that was uh, when he was a kid, his parents were at home and a woman came to his front door and knocked on it and asked for someone that didn't live there. And turns out they were casing houses. They were casing houses so anyone that didn't knock got robbed. It was like a whole flip flop from the movie. But it's interesting when real life flip flops from the movie. Yeah, you know, it happens a lot. <laughs> uh, he took a lot of inspiration from 70s movies in this, uh, specifically Jaws and Aliens. He said he enjoys the tension that it builds up. And he also mentioned that he wants he enjoys uh, spending time with characters and getting to know them a little bit before things kind of sh you know, shit hits fan. 
That was a lot of talking. <laughs> Jordan, you picked this movie. What what do you love about The Strangers? It's in my top ten favorite horror films. Uh, just the sheer intensity that the movie brings is unlike a lot nowadays. Um, I hate saying it like that, but you just don't have that intensity with some horror movies. And The Strangers is a very unique one. But I just, I love the concept of them just being in this house secluded by themselves with these three strangers that just happened to upon their house. I love that. I really enjoyed how grounded it felt. I feel like it's pretty easy to shoehorn in uh, shoehorn in a slasher killer, honestly, but they just kind of felt like a force of nature that this couple ran into. One of my favorite aspects about this actually is where we start with the characters because we already start with them having a dynamic that's in a place of tension. So going from that and then dealing with being murdered, it's just insane. <laughs> Sabrina, what did you, what do you think about this movie? Um, like it's like a weird guilty pleasure of like a movie, but it's also like freaks me out because again, it's every person's nightmare. Even because the fact that it's once it's a once you find out it's like a true story or like you know based on it, and like the whole quote of like oh because you're home like that. Ugh. But I do I do love it as a movie itself. But yeah, I just um, I guess the realisticness of it kind of makes it. I don't want to say good, but kind of. Like that, that's what makes it like different than other like slashers is like that whole based on a true story thing that kind of different uh, makes it different from every other like most slasher movies. It was like something different for the time too, which I liked. I don't know. I like constantly go between the first and second movie, but I really like. I love this one too, though, in its like own own way. I mean, like we're not. Are we talking spoilers? Uh, we will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna say anything else until okay. So I'll just leave it at that. Shout out to Sabrina for reminding me that we're doing this in two segments. Uh, Blake, give me your quick yeah, non-spoiler <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> no, I, I, forgot to, yeah. I forgot to throw the text out, too. <laughs> I, was like, oh, I like that Jordan mentioned um, intensity, right? That mm. kind of a lot of horror movies these days lack that, and I strongly agree, because where this movie excels, I think a lot of horror movies today think they need to throw all this absurd amounts of gore at you or something really shocking or exploitive just to kind of you know get awareness towards this movie whereas the strangers is just a terrifying movie because you see a woman in her kitchen with some man behind her that she doesn't even know is there and the fact that the director just takes from the best examples of that building tension like alien and jaws definitely shows when it comes to this first movie and i was even telling sabrina yesterday growing up and God, i was like nine when this movie came out and i was into horror but seeing this ad play on the tv of that one guy on the swing and just certain shots in that trailer terrified me and then when i finally came to see the movie it it lived up to that uh to that horror i think it does hold its own in the weight of horror today and I, I like looking back on it and seeing you know that it is grounded and is it is realistic and i think that's why it uh it holds up because at no matter what point in time that we are this could always happen to you and i think that's why this movie is just it's uh it is a timeless horror movie i'll say that blake you guys are pretty much dropping up a lot of my my thoughts on it i feel like i feel like the um the 70 influences are absolutely felt throughout the movie. It does remind me of classic home invasion movies. It's it's quiet. It's very, really uh, bleak. It's not really in your face. Like I said, it was grounded earlier. I do recommend this one for slasher fans. I want something a bit more subtle. Cam. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that this movie uh, takes its time developing the characters and making me give a damn, even if it's kind of like 30 minutes before the the real action of it starts happening i think that's fine but i actually found myself pretty engaged in the uh romantic drama of this couple breaking up after a failed proposal which i think has got to be just a tremendously awkward situation to be in but it seems like they always do end up breaking up after the failed proposal which i guess would make sense if you're really 
on that different of a page as each other to where one person is thinking, yeah, it's time to get married. And the other person is like, no. That's why I you guess always it's like, talk about it, kids. It's like a, that's why you always leave a note. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Though. I'm we're going to talk today. about it. Yeah, it's, it's a big wake up it. call. Mm-hmm. But I found, I found their storyline engaging. And if it had just been a romantic drama between the two of them, I, I would have, I would have actually watched that. Still. <laughs> More upsetting version of Sanctuary. Let's jump into Spoilerville. Yeah. If anyone wants to talk about specific things, who has specific thoughts? I'll, I'll kick us off. Go for it. I'll get, I'll get the ball rolling. <laughs> Don't be too eager. <laughs> I like to Sorry, that was an awful joke. Thoughts. She's been brought it up. What? Yeah, let's no. let's kick it off. You said you had spoiler thoughts. Yes, no, Sabrina. I, I said in case I said anything. I didn't say if I had any. Specific. Uh, nah, you're up. You're you up, said, Sabrina. I'll, I'll let's go. That. No, no, no. <laughs> now you're on the spot. <laughs> no, no, no. You guys are gonna make her nervous. <laughs> <laughs> she can't go Good. when Put everyone's watching. <laughs> make her nervous. No, no I'm literally no thought. No thoughts head empty right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start talking about the ending. <laughs> I okay. feel like I feel like the ending should have been cut like a, a minute short. Just, just one just one minute short cuz I really felt the gravity of hearing them like being stabbed to death. It almost made me think of Zodiac yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And I I felt like that wrapped things up really well. So you would mm. cut that final jump scare? I would cut the final jump scare. Maybe just have the kids even. open for a full circle, but I think I've cut the final jump scare. Yeah. I've always felt iffy about that. It might just be me, but I do like that these characters just feel real. They don't really feel like horror movie characters, except for one scene that we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, they're actually not the dumbest characters I've ever seen in a movie of this type, except for the moment that uh, the guy accidentally shoots his best friend. I thought that was a very big, very big dumb moment. But um, other than that, other than that, I didn't think they were like making the worst choices. I thought they were kind of holding their own. But you were saying about the ending. I think the ending, you know, it sort of uh, bookends, kind of reflects back to the beginning. It opens up in a very unsettling way. We just see the flashes of blood on the wall and the kid on the phone just like utterly terrified. That f- felt pretty real, especially after saying that it's a true story, which it it wasn't. It just yeah. wasn't a true story at all, really. Thank you for bringing that up again, because I feel like this is one of those, like, this is like one of the last movies that can have that effect, that kind of viral effect of like, this is a true story and everyone's freaking out about it. Because everyone just Googles it immediately now. But I remember in 2008 being scared because mm. <laughs> I thought this was real. And my mom was telling me about it the, uh, because you were home. Yeah, that was. That's yeah, my thoughts. Had... Jordan, you want to spoil some stuff? I do want to take it back to uh, <clears throat> Mike, the guy who gets blasted with a shotgun. I love that part just because it shows the adrenaline that they're feeling in that in that moment so they don't they're not thinking oh my best friend mike's showing up i can't shoot him they don't they don't expect him to be there and when he just gets blasted with that shotgun it's like oh that just happened and uh the jump scares in in general are very sparse but they're really really well done especially the the first jump scare like uh when they're at the door I love that scene. Yeah, that's it's super effective. You know, the things with the strangers is super effective, especially the first introduction. It's just eerie. There's just dread because the way that uh, mm-hmm. she is hidden, obscured in the shadows, and it just feels off. You kind of feel it in your tummy. Mm, I love how quietly <laughs> yeah. the the characters emerge. The uh, their names are Dollface, Pinup Girl, and the Man in the Mask. I love character design in this. Oh my god, yeah. Yes. That's, that's something that made it so new, so unique. I love that. Definitely so made its place in iconic horror imagery. Blake. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> Nothing else that you guys haven't covered. I I can definitely tell that the director watched Batman Begins and liked Scarecrow a lot because that's all I can think about <laughs> when I see um 
the main guy. <laughs> Me yeah. too. Batman tangent. And that, that's yeah, yeah. There's our. <laughs> yes. the there it is. <laughs> wasn't me. Wasn't me this time again. Uh, yeah, it's rarely ever me, but that's all I can think of when I see that guy. And he is my favorite. It might be because of I just that's a really cool design. Like you know, normal, average, everyday clothes with the freaky bag mask. Um, and I'm glad he he always headlines these uh stranger movies. He's like the face of the franchise. Him and um, pinup girl maybe. Yeah, pinup girl Forget. definitely has her moment in the second movie. Has yeah, it. yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Then yes, I was gonna say it's more of like I love this one, but like I have more to say about the second one than the first one that like already hasn't been covered. I've got some stuff on this first one. I'll jump in. Okay, took you long enough. Sorry, <laughs> I don't want to. Well, you were about to say something. I forgot what I was gonna say at this point. Yeah, I, want, I don't want to repeat what everyone else said. I don't want to do that. <laughs> So this was edited by Kevin Grudert from the Saw franchise. Uh, he edited all of the Saw mm. movies except the ones he directed. That's so surprising. <laughs> he does which this. One? He he edited. Yeah, which ones did he direct? Kevin Grudert directed Saw Six, Saw Seven, and Saw X. He did not direct the the okay. two ones, the two of them that people don't like. Yes. Okay. Well, I interesting suppose. guy. Okay. I think Saw X was the best one. Yeah, um, me too. That's where I'm at on that. Of those three? Of all of them, or I think. the best Saw? I think okay. Saw X is the best Saw movie. I don't know if I felt like that when it came out. I don't really remember, but that's where I'm at today. Uh, did, did we debate between two and X, or did I like two more than you? Do you remember which one I two I really was? liked oh. Saw 2 okay. when I first watched it. But then I watched all of them all at the same time, and they the the yeah. the narrative really so jumbled up yeah. for me we lot. were struggling for that once you start watching all those like just one after the other they just start to become one big like conglomerate yeah mm -hmm. at one point we need a break <laughs> we can't yeah. do it <laughs> should have done one per night yeah. but then we would watch like three in a day i was like oh, that's a lot that's what i tried to do with Blake, and i was like i was like come on we can do more and he's like no he's like i need a break and i was like i don't <laughs> let's do this like but Kevin Grudert is a master of editing. He does a lot of uh, specific things in the, in these movies. Well, actually, just the first one. He does this slow mo effect where it clearly wasn't shot for slow mo, so it's really framey. But it kind of adds to the creepy atmosphere of it. The way the at the beginning they're they're just driving by the houses. It's it's slow mo, but it's framey. And I would say a lot of times that effect might not work, but I think it kind of makes this movie really distinctive. Mm -hmm. And another thing he does is putting all the scenes out of order, kind of jumbling it up. It's like we are piecing together the narrative because in real life, as it supposedly is, mm -hmm. the people investigating the situation would be piecing it together piece by piece. Yeah, and that's something I actually really love because one of the things that Brian noted was... Bernito? No, I've lost my train of thought mid-sentence. He wanted to make a story from the victim's perspective instead of a story from the FBI investigating a serial killer. Yeah, which is hard to do when it when you're having to piece together the, the pieces. Piece together them pieces. You gotta piece together the body pieces. Oof. Ah. Uh, Big yikes. Oof. <laughs> you guys wanna talk about Pray at Night? <laughs> Or do you have more? Sorry. There's a Go there's ahead. a joke somewhere. Uh, okay, so Glenn Howerton is in this, and there's a joke somewhere about the implication, but I, I don't know. I got. We we shouldn't. Does anyone anyone have anything? Because I saw him, I was like, is that the guy from It's Always Sunny? Maybe we and I'm shouldn't. like, I feel like there's an implication here. That's the implication. <laughs> it's the implication. I'm, I say that around him, and like he she didn't. She brings that up way too much. He didn't tell me until like months <laughs> later that he was picking up on it, and I was like, I thought that you just never. never I know it. what the implication is, but I feel like the way you say it is not. It's definitely not the same context, which is well, a good, no, it's not the same thing. context. That's what makes it funny. <laughs> That's a good thing, but yeah, I'm I'm good on Strangers One. <laughs> I like it. I saw I saw one note. Moving on. I saw Adam. Oh yeah, I, she saw in my notebook uh, Adam Brody question mark because there was, I thought that when the man in the mask unmasks, you you barely see like the side of his face for a brief moment. I'm like, is this Adam Brody? If this is Adam Brody, I'm gonna shit myself. But we never see them. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Unfortunately. I mean, you can always look it up. Yeah, they're just stunt Yeah, goals. whoever played the bag head. What's his name? The man yeah, in the Adam mask? Brody. Man in the mask, is that his name? I wish, I wish it was Adam Brody. That's his name. It's pretty basic. Ah. Moving on. The shape was taken. Jumping forward. <laughs> jumping in. Jump, jump jumping, up. Jumping forward. Jump up to the oh, street. Shit, that was 2018? Hey. Yeah, 10 yeah. years. It's 2018. I thought that was like 2014 or something. Wow. I know. Time oh is wacky. God. This was actually in development hell for 10 years. <laughs> I was going to say, I believe it. that. I would get that. They started mm, writing it. Oh, wait. Not the same writer, director at all whatsoever. This is same super, writer. Super di same writer? Yeah. Okay. He co-wrote it. You can not, tell it's the, a different director. Not the director. same director. <laughs> no. Which is funny because this director obviously took inspiration and also said this in an interview from John Carpenter in the 80s. So 70s, 80s, it was cool. I don't know. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I thought that was a neato fact, guys. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just talk about movies all day. Jordan, special guest Jordan. Pray at night, 10 years. It's not as good as the first in my book. Uh, I do really like it though. It took two watches for me to actually appreciate it though, because the first time I watched it, I didn't like it. And the second time I was like, oh, okay, I can kind of get behind it because I kind of had to, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, disassociate, I guess. Kind of put the first one aside and kind of look at it at its own, in its own terms, its own style of movie, because it is very different with how they go about it in terms of its visual style, its cinematography. It's very, very, very different. Yeah, the cinematography is, uh, they, they transition from all handheld in the first movie to like no handheld. It's all smooth, smooth camera work. Different no. director, uh, same writer. It's uh, Johannes Roberts. Yes. Oh, it was written by Brian Bernito. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never and, seeing a name on this podcast ever again. And then I'm... Ben Katai as well. Yes. They went nearly full camp with this one it sort of starts out right there. just right there they they start out with basically the same premise like dollface asking for tamra once again same name and for the first 20 30 minutes it kind of seems like they're going to do the same thing and then there's a big tonal shift and suddenly we got like bonnie tyler in the mix with total eclipse of the heart <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it turns into a a super campy movie, which I think that's uh, what I loved about it. It was like not as serious and like you know, it was just like okay, this is just a regular non-fictional horror, like slasher, silly slasher movie. I would say it kind of works in this movie's favor, but they should have made it a little funnier in the beginning. I think, I think by the third act, it's just this wacky kind of horror comedy adjacent movie the first act i wouldn't say really leans into that you've got you've got the most walking cliche <laughs> flannel ramones t-shirt cigarette smoking with i'm cool teenage girl who just i'm a rebel of a teen yeah mm -hmm. very um... <laughs> not my real dad <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then just constantly fighting with the brother which is, yeah. you know. They started I, see, out with the same premise, but the characters here, I would say, are not as interesting. No. <laughs> no, like, not even like, a little bit. I, I wouldn't say they weren't not interesting. I, it was something I kind of appreciate is, like, when you're fighting with your sibling and then, like, you know, something bad happens, like, they'll protect you even though, like, you don't get along and everything. So I guess, like, that's, like, a... Because I have a brother, so I'm, like, sometimes... My brother drives me up the wall. It's like if something happens, I know my brother would always like protect me. So I guess I kind of always like that aspect of it. I don't know. I appreciate that. I'm all, I'm like a sucker. Like somebody. keepers, I feel like... creepers. Yeah, I got there's like, definitely a face. yeah I like sense of relatability. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I was like yeah the whole because I saw it in theaters and like I remember seeing it with my friend. And I was like this is so like me and my brother, but like I know if even if like we're driving each other up the wall. If anything would have happened, he would always like protect me. So I guess like that's like the realisticness of it. <laughs> Blake, how do you feel yes. about this movie? Uh, I like it. It's definitely a step down from the first movie, in my opinion. I like the tone of this one to an extent. Um, the fact that it is a little less realistic, but 
like Sabrina said, they kind of make up for that when it comes to the um, siblings. Jeez, <laughs> sorry. I was like um, siblings. <laughs> siblings. There were a few things in this movie that you can tell was trying to recreate that magic from the first movie, and it irritated me at the end when she uh, asked, "Why are you doing this?" And Dollface said, "Why not?" <laughs> I was just like, "Okay." So you took the best thing about the first movie and wanted to do that again. And at a certain point, it just becomes a uh, one long chase scene. Uh, I like the scene by the pool. And again, that's where the different director definitely comes in because they loved playing with lighting and colors and it wasn't as dark as the first movie in uh, both senses of that term. But um, mm-hmm. it was fine. After I saw this movie, it, it had been so long since the first movie. I was kind of you know, over the idea of The Strangers, especially how this movie ends. But I, I'm, I'm potentially ready for more, even after this. I guess that would bring us to Spoiler Town. Spoiler Town? Sure. I, <laughs> Spoiler Town. I think you guys, you guys covered all my non-spoiler thoughts, pretty much. I agree that this feels so different than the first one. It's like almost completely opposite to me, mm-hmm. personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot more character choices in this. I really had to just kind of bare knuckle through I do like the third act, though. I, I <laughs> Listen, okay, I'm telling you, if my mom was helping me get through, through a, a skylight thing and I just watched her get caressed by a killer and just, just, st- just stand there, I could stomp her face in. Yeah. You have the high ground. You literally have the high ground. It's not even do more. It's do something. Like, like, ah, ah. That whole scene was ridiculous. That was actually something I noted was uh, the mom's death just being absolutely dumb. I couldn't. Yeah. It was so stupid. They were just screaming. You gotta do something. Do more. Do more. Same with same more. with the dad. Like the way like I know he's he got he gets impaled right. Yes. And he's just sitting there begging to the man in the mask, and it, after a certain ex- like period of time I'm like dude just stop begging and just die like you're just you're annoying me oh my god (laughs) Jordan was in fact one of the strangers (laughs) that I agree honestly and what's crazy is that took four hours to film that one scene that was the longest one that's a third of a shoot day so he said he begged for four hours wow he was there (laughs) you just would not die (laughs) Die already. Yeah, Jordan went full uh, Flynn from Breaking Bad. Why don't you just die already? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, by the way, this was filmed in an abandoned town in Kentucky. That's it. I just wanted to throw that in somewhere. Okay, so I... That's cool. (laughs) The whole town was abandoned? It was like near an airport or something. Like the airport bought out the town because of noise. I don't know. I skimmed the article. (laughs) <laughs> skim the article you're like i had a fun fact but i didn't look at all the facts <laughs> i looked at the the most fun of the fact that was fun just the i didn't look facts. at all the details i know i i'll go down the imdb trivia and be like eh, boring 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 and it's like oh this is worth yeah worth noting <laughs> oh no yeah <laughs> that's so blake <laughs> most of them little fun facts. boring though <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this was filmed in uh California. <laughs> this character right. sneezes three times in three scenes. What does it mean? <laughs> the real meaning of the what sneeze. Does it mean? Um, <laughs> but the 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 strangers themselves felt really paranormal at this point. I mean, man in mask survived a car explosion and drove said car, which I got a laugh out of. What was her name? I have it somewhere. Bailey Madison. Bailey Madison running in a straight line from the burning car. <laughs> yeah. Just... I was cackling. I was like, just, just like yeah, some a little... people live in two dimensions. Just a little bit. She can't turn left. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my least favorite tropes when it's just running in a straight line. Would you can Prometheus? just go left, go right? I was just going to say Prometheus is pretty infamous. <laughs> I don't remember. I haven't seen that in so long. I don't want to talk about the Prometheus Prometheus. school of running away from things. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> we have we have covered Prometheus pretty well here. I know my Prometheus God. tangent. Pretty brutal no! death that could have been avoided. Although we could probably do an Alien Bonanza later this year 
Oh, he will. Because we haven't yes, technically we reviewed each of them. I would yeah. love to. If you remember, we touched on The Strangers when we did the Based on True Events episode. We did. I remember that. Was it a true story then? As yeah. true as it is now. Everything you heard is true. <laughs> totally. But like I said earlier, the third act really was fun. I was kind of treading water with the movie up until then. For instance, other point, I had three scenes I, I pointed out in my notes to just kind of like grind my little little movie watching gears. It was mom scene, the running away from the, the car, and then also if my kids, if I, if I have kids and they came up to me, panicked, crying, saying they found dead bodies, I would be a bit more urgent about the situation. <laughs> That's like, oh, this better not be a prank. You rascals. No, the, the, the moment do. my 16 year old daughter starts smoking cigarettes, I'm gonna completely stop listening to her. <laughs> what if she wears a Ramon shirt? So like, you know, it's because she's cool. If she wore a Ramon's shirt, I would ask what her favorite Ramon's song is. <laughs> I, I'm not, I, it's not gatekeeping. I'm not a Ramon's fan, but it's like, it's one of those shirts that people just wear. See, because of that whole trend, people would do that to me and I would always like have answers. Cause like I said, my dad like, and me and my dad always shared like that music. So like whenever teachers and stuff like that would ask me, they're like, you know who they are? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, and I would like name everything. They're like, oh, I thought you were one of those other kids that just wears them. I was like, no, <laughs> I was like, no. I was like, they're not- I thought you were one of those. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, I'm not one of those children, no. Ooh, I have a story like that that Blake will appreciate. So I had the infamous, had the infamous Secret oh Wars cover on my t-shirt when I was in high school. And these guys were starting to question me about comic books and Spider-Man. I'm like, I know plenty. And I asked them, what was the issue that Peter got the symbiote suit, the one I was wearing? And he, he didn't know. Mm. I fumbled That's through crazy. that. <laughs> Answer right in his face. Oh, the son in this movie is Bob from Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. It's Lewis Pullman, son of Bill Pullman. I know yeah. him from Bad oh. Panda. Oh Royale. Yeah, I recognize ever him. since that, ever since that this movie, he's been everywhere. And I'm like, I'm like, I love this for him. Mm. I do. I love him and everything. <laughs> he became one of my faves because of this movie, not gonna lie. Bob. I didn't know Bob. he I didn't know he had a famous father Bob. though either. Ooh, yeah. yeah. What's Bill's Bill from? Famous. I'm glitching out. Independence Day? No, his dad? No, That's from uh, oh, Twister. He's from Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's the Han Solo character in Spaceballs. That's true. I can't. I haven't seen that since like middle school. So Lone you know. Star. Well, I haven't Lone seen Spaceballs in a while. Oh my god! I know. May the shorts be with you. I watched it because of at Comic Con they had the the cosplay. They were wearing the cosplay. Yeah. And I was like, that's Star Wars adjacent. What what's going on? Dark helmet. Dark helmet. Hmm. Dark helmet. <laughs> you went over my helmet. <laughs> I love that movie so much. Side note, Sabrina, if you enjoy the the younger Pullman, watch Bad Times at El Real. Oh, that's I've a fun seen movie. It. I love that's it. a fun yeah, movie. It's fun. I know. I loved him in that too. Chris Hemsworth's little dance. That fucking movie. <laughs> but my dad was like, "This is like the most insane movie ever," and I was like, "I know." I was like, "I love it." I went to see that with two of my friends after class one day. All three of us fell asleep during that movie. So I don't know if that was an us problem. Yeah. Like we just genuinely didn't like the movie, but um, no, I haven't seen I think it that, since. I think that just wasn't a good movie to you guys because you never fall asleep during movies, like, ever. No, I don't. That's, Even that's when it's like a me terrible, thing. I don't fall asleep. That's, that's like a me thing. <laughs> when, the movie yeah. happens, when I'm not into it, I'll, like, pass out. I've fallen asleep to, like, one other movie, and it was the King's Speech. <laughs> I was like, I don't give a fuck about this guy's speech. Did you, <laughs> <fall asleep? laughs> Did you enjoy the, the fuck, fuck monologue? That was the only scene I remember. Nice. <laughs> I saw the important bit. I fell asleep through uh, the last like three Transformers movies. I every one of them. The last three. Even the new like, one. The last two great ones. Okay, let me specify. I guess I should say <laughs> Age of Extinction, Last Night, and what was the one before? Was there one after that? After that, it was oh, Bumblebee, yeah. and then the Rise. Okay, of so Jesus. I guess just the last two. Sorry. Okay. Age of Extinction That's... and the Last Night. So the ones with Mark Wahlberg. Yes. 
I, I, guess, I don't right. think out. I saw them fully. That's I don't even. Yeah, I don't think I saw those fully. My best friend obsessed with Age of Extinction for whatever reason back when it had released, and uh, he was like, "Dude, you gotta watch this. It's really good." <laughs> and I'm sitting there about I don't know 30 minutes, 40 minutes in, I fall asleep. So I don't really remember anything. <laughs> Age of Extinction was the first Mark Wahlberg one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I distinctly remember, it's the scene where TJ Miller dies. Spoiler. <laughs> and yeah. I forgot I was he was sitting, in that. <laughs> I was, I know. I don't even know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was got, sitting in my when chair. When he got canceled, everyone was play, like, posting that all over. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? I was. Yeah, remember when he, when he fucking died in Transformers? <laughs> <laughs> Brutally, too. Oh, I remember no, watching no, the no, scene, no. and I was like, this is too much. It just keeps going, because like, it just keeps cutting to more explosions, and it, it felt like it went on for five minutes. I was I was just in awe of, like, oh, but stop. I, I, I want to yeah. tell Michael Bay to just, just stop. What are you doing? I Anyways, think we all want to tell Michael Bay to just stop. Time, that was my moment I broke. <laughs> <laughs> at the time it was like a whatever scene like do it watching the movie but then like seeing people use it as like a, oh wow he's canceled remember when this like constantly it just made it so much funnier and now i'm like okay i appreciate it more now <laughs> it's so like, funny you... if i ever see michael bay in real life it's on site it's on site a hug because you respect the first three Transformers um, Michael movies. Bay makes sure. Hollywood a lot of money. They love that, man. He can make a good movie, though. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, he's capable. It's just a shame that he makes a bunch of stinkers, too. Threaten the Russo brothers if they fuck up Hercules. I'm like, listen. I'm like, oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> like, I don't Thanks care them, if you any war. I will fight you guys. They're doing live-action Hercules? Okay. Maybe. Who knows? Listen, they were doing it with Guy Ritchie. <laughs> Guy Ritchie dropped out, and now I think it's just them. And now I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, oh. Putting a lot of faith in them. The They're pretty. So it. I'm so scared. Well, they produced they everything might. everywhere all at once. I mean, they've got. I will. I'll. I'll see anything. I'll give anything they've a chance. They've produced from them. a lot of great stuff. I just. I don't know if I have high hopes that much anymore because Guy Ritchie's she's gone. So I'm like very, very annoyed now. I like don't want to let it go. Hey, but the, I'm also um... like, most like my baby. The Russos might it. step up to the plate and direct it themselves and just make the whole movie gray. <laughs> <laughs> it's on site then. You sound like Bless the heart. It's like Cameron you sure I mean about Sam Sam Raimi directing something in the future. It's like it could happen. He could just do another evil dead. Sam Raimi or Spider Man. Final Evil Dead could happen and he could get secret wars. Like it, those are it, good it, reminders. Was, Don't give me hope. <laughs> Those are good reminders. I think At least, the like, likelihood get something good. Of directing a Marvel movie is far more likely than him doing another Evil Dead, which is really weird to say. I actually agree because I remember him. I think he said something about not liking not be not being the person that wrote Doctor Strange, and I think him being in like the like the driver's seat for a Marvel movie again would be something he'd be totally up for. Yeah, he was a great band-aid for Multiverse of Madness, but he, he saved definitely him didn't. <laughs> he did, and he definitely didn't cook all of that. And he <clears> but that's why, like, so. some of the problems I have, I know is not his fault. If it wasn't for Sam Raimi, I would not care about that movie in the slightest. Period. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Like a... Oh, man. I was... It was his fingerprints that made it so good. Yeah, Which I mean, shots? it's my top since uh, Endgame, basically, pretty much. No Way Home? Yeah, I think you Multiverse you of Madness. You more than No Way Home? Yeah, Aunt May's death pisses me off a lot. Because I... you think she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me really mad. It made me really upset. Oh, <laughs> I can just see Cam in the theater opening night like, no! <laughs> Why? Oh, like, no, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm done. And yeah, I was, I was so mad. And then the next scene... Toby and Andy show up, and then I'm like, "You guys, what are you doing?" I was sobbing because <laughs> I was like, "Oh, she's fine." I'm like, oh no, she said the line. As yeah. soon as she said the line, like, they're Uncle Benning her. Oh no! Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't say. <laughs> don't say power or responsibility like... or anything. Oh my God. I always think that she like stabbed at first with like goblins glider because i'm like okay maybe that's why like you know she died so quick but like you don't even see like what she dies from she just like she's okay one minute and then she just dies and you're like oh yeah she got that's hit so... with the glider and then blown up she did get hit with the glider, that does right? it yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah 
What's up next for the strangers? Yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> we have a lot, actually. We have what's being Ooh. called the Titanic what? of horror movies. <laughs> what? It's because... They're going to sink it? Well, I mean, I hope not. no. Damn. Sorry, Damn. too soon. I hope Sorry. not. Yeah, because well, they, have a, they have a new love story coming out. Well, it's because what? they filmed all the movies, all three of the shows at the same time. Not back to back. Yeah. They filmed everything. Everywhere, all at once. Ah. Ha. Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> very, very scarce. were bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, since we don't really have any information much on them, I'm just excited for... The, I like the two leading actors. Like, they're going to be really good together. That's all I'm going to say. Supposedly, all three movies are supposed to drop this year. And I, I don't know if they are going to, like... Do that theatrically. I don't know if that is feasible for them. I don't. I feel like they should do it on be... like Netflix. I feel like these was are probably going to be. Netflix? Gonna be... I thought it was going to be Netflix, like a like a Fear Street kind of thing. I feel like they should do that. That's like a I was going to say, am I thinking of Fear Street, or were they going to put it on Netflix? They're doing another Fear Street. They are doing another Fear Street. I... No, but they definitely said something about Netflix though too, because like that's because it's they been on Netflix to, uh, forever. Cause... So. I think, okay, so I think what happened was they, when they first announced it, they were going to do it on Netflix because they changed the whole plot of it, too. Like, not that it's, like, a big deal, but the two leading actors were supposed to be siblings again, but I think because it was too much like the second one, they were like, okay, we'll just do them boyfriend and girlfriend. Because I was like, huh? Because when we were talking about predictions, like, a couple weeks ago, when you guys were going over it, I was like, they definitely changed to more... Because when they first announced it, I was, like, reading everything and, like, yeah. But then they were, like, boy, uh, her, this girl and her boyfriend. I was, like, what? So, I think they've just been kind of, as they're making these, and I guess starting to film, I think they're making changes as they go. So, the Netflix thing might still be pending. I'm not sure, but I do know that they're taking the uh, kind of plot of the first one, starting the movie in the same way, more or less, and then I taking it a different direction, but it's I in the same why. continuity. In the same continuity as the first two movies, <clears throat> which would have to mean either these three strangers are totally new people because they all are deceased as of the end of the second movie, or it's a prequel slash interquel something. It takes place at an Airbnb. Uh, Air like it is called chapter one, yeah. Airbnb yeah, started in 2008, so it could really be anywhere. I'm very curious about this, honestly, because I've heard contradicting info, I guess. It needs to be more fleshed out for me to really see what they're doing here. Because yeah. the director mentioned how he was really excited to not be doing a reboot or a remake, but expanding upon the first one, like you said. But also, it is called a remake a lot sometimes. So that's what I think is happening. I think as they're doing it and like getting ready to film, they're constantly changing. Because, like, again, some little things that they had, and then when you guys were talking about it, they changed, like, so much. So I think that they're kind of being like, oh, you know what, maybe this doesn't work. And I think they're, yeah, they're contradicting themselves, and then they're just kind of figuring out and changing it as I go. That's just what it seems like to me. We'll see. They're all filmed. They're all done. The director yeah. says he sees it as one big movie. All of them see it as one big movie. It's like the horror mm -hmm. infinity game. I think it really needs a theatrical release because if if it's one big story and you're just going to dump it on streaming, why not just chop it up into episodes, do like a 10 part mini series or something? I think like I think these probably need to come out in the theaters, but I think the first one is April, May, something. Um, uh, I think it says May 14th. That's the supposed release date. Yeah, it's that, always yeah. there with the fact we need <laughs> Even when we're alive, you're always just like, oh yeah, no worries, it's this. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> no, I hope I hope it does get a theater release because like I feel like if it's on streaming, if it's not, if it's anywhere but Netflix, I think it's gonna go like so under the rug. It sucks, yeah. but I just feel like that that could happen. Cause for and like I'm not saying it's like a huge franchise, but like that's a reckonable like that name alone is a very reckonable, you know, for in the horror genre genre. So I feel like if it gets through on just release that people will be like, oh yeah, I guess that came out. It will heavily depend on the marketing. Marketing can yeah. do wonders. And a smart mark. <laughs> a smart, mark. <laughs> smart mark. Smart mark. Shop smart. That's smart. Shop that's smart. Good marketing. I just love a good marketing plan for a movie. Ashy Slashy's Sex Emporium. What? 
Market. We were talking about S Mart, and then I thought of Ashy, 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 Ashy. It's in the TV show. Ashy nice. Slashy. We've all watched it. The Sex Emporium is in the TV show. <laughs> it's, it's I stuff. swear. <laughs> Don't look at my search history. There's a there's a whole cum episode. <laughs> anyway, Cam, were you watching the bootlegs again? There. Did I not? Did not? Did y'all not see I the rem- sperm bank? I remember. Oh, Don't gaslight me. <laughs> I remember. What a note <laughs> to end on. Uh, Jordan's never going to watch our show again. He's like, oh, God, these guys are... No, it's just going to keep bringing me back. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't scare him off, yeah. guys. Any final thoughts, anyone? I, I would like to note that the director for the upcoming trilogy, Rennie Harlan, he did Dream Master, Die Hard 2, Cliffhanger, Deep Blue Sea, Exorcist the Beginning, Devil's Pass, Legend of Hercules, and now all three strangers. He's done other stuff too, but those were the ones that kind of stuck out to me the most. I, uh, for anyone that wants to give him shit for Exorcist, he shouldn't be blamed for that. The movie looks good. <laughs> I'm like, the directing-wise, I'll give it to him. <laughs> he looks good. Studio interference is a master. bitch. Oh, oh, Spider-Man yeah, fans know a lot about that. <laughs> Yeah. But Ooh. thank you again, Jordan, for mentioning that. I actually had that in our predictions because like this is an interesting <clears throat> mixed bag of of movies he's done. I have no idea. Yeah. No idea what and the, it's gonna look like. The, yeah. the writers I was kind of going through <clears throat> what they'd written. And there's three. Alan R. Cohen, Alan Freeland, and Amber Lutfi. Lutfi? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. She's done nothing but the other two, uh, the most notable thing for me was that they had directed 15 episodes of King of the Hill, or wrote, excuse oh, me. Wow. Respect. <laughs> Mad respect. So, thought that was interesting. We won fucked up King of the Hill episode. <laughs> <laughs> aren't they supposed to bring King of the Hill back? Weren't they? Weren't they? Yeah, to... I think there's like some revival coming up. Here's hoping. Thanks to everyone for being here. As always, we are on YouTube at youtube.com slash lastscare where you can subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our live shows or other episodes. We are also on TikTok and Twitter at Last Scare. And on the Twitter, you can see all our updates and stay in the loop. Get an occasional extra tangent for free. Indeed. Gluten-free tangent. Jordan, our Ooh. special guest, is at Sith Morrison on Twitter. Jail is at Cheese Stick Rat. I'm at the Palmyra Party. Blake is at Villainous Comics with an X. And Sabrina is at Nightweens. 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 No, it's Nightweens now. <laughs> <laughs> and just like Stu and the Strangers. I'll be right back.